Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Urban Legends video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll start a whole new series here based on your suggestions. Please keep them coming. I'm going to be doing these videos throughout probably the rest of next week. So be on the lookout for those videos too. This one is a perfect example of the type of Urban Legends that I look for because it's a little known I guess urban legend of sorts uh, based on a localized area never heard of it probably most of you haven't heard of it either so it's a great opportunity to share with everyone here except one of the uh, most interesting things about this urban legend is that it's true it's very very true and in fact there's still there's photographs and then there's a current living status as of sort that make this urban legend true the only reason why it's still considered somewhat of an urban legend has to do with its very surprising look and this is what I mean I'm talking about the blue people of Kentucky which basically if you would imagine like a smurf of some sort or maybe even someone like a from the movie Avatar where they have a bluish hue tone to their skin that's essentially what this is when we're talking about the blue people of Kentucky or the blue skinned people of Kentucky in fact this is one of the photographs of the blue skinned people of Kentucky uh, it has to do with a family called I believe that's how it's said the Fugatis somebody may need to um, let me know how it's truly said but in this case this is the family that started it all and in, in that case the father right in the middle the patriarch he's the one that pretty much everything came from at least when it comes to a genetic standpoint so here's how it goes way back when sometime in the 1800s early 1800s or so this guy Martin Fugatti he became I guess he came over from France and he began a family there in Kentucky um, in fact it was a place called Troublesome Creek a pretty unique name when you think about it but he started there in 1820 a family of some sorts um, what was interesting though is that he married someone by the name of Elizabeth Smith and the thing that ties them together is the fact that both of them had what's called a recessive gene tied to this blue skinned uh, condition. Um, it's a really long name, but it's called methemoglobinemia. I think that's how it's said. Sorry, it's, it's again, it's a long name. But in essence, all it is is it's hemoglobin that isn't able to be oxygenized and so because of it it causes that bluish tone within people I guess um, it, it, if you wanted to truly like see a, of an example just take like a rubber band and then tie it around your finger and then little by little you'll start seeing it get red and then you'll start seeing it get purple it's because it's not receiving much oxygen in some ways that's how the effect there what's interesting to note is that most of us actually have in some it could be a higher level of this condition um, the average person that has around one percent of this methemoglobin whatever that is in terms of a hemoglobin uh, that's normal but whenever you start getting into the 20 percent range as this Fugatti family had then that's when the conditions start kicking in that's when you start having that bluish tone to your skin because of the weird levels of oxygen that are going on within the blood level but there are still uh, that's rare though very very rare uh, that's why we don't see a lot of people that look like avatar or look like smurfs walking around within the u.s. because it is an extremely rare condition but there is still apparently a large number of people that fall within the 10 to 20 percent range that's the range where you still have a higher than normal level of this condition but you do not exhibit the outward signs like obviously you don't have have that blue skin to taking over your entire body so because of it there may be a larger number of people of and for lack of a better term of Smurfs that are out there it's just that the way that the world works um, you just don't have this that display what leads to it being increased though is if there's inbreeding that's what I was talking about earlier with the Fugatis with regards to him and his wife both of them carried that genetic trait that genetic and I'm only using the word because it was described that way as a genetic defect. Now, the article stated that that led the researchers to surmise that, yes, it was indeed inbreeding. Like, whoever 
uh, this guy Fugati was whenever he met his quote unquote wife it was actually someone within his family and that same someone also carried that genetic trait so when you have two people with the same trait man and woman and they have a child when that happens like in this case uh, Martin and Elizabeth then their children tend to have more uh, chances of having that blue skin so in that small community what happened was uh, in the 1800s and then going forward sure enough there was a small community of blue skinned people that's because going forward everyone was kind of like inbreeding with each other now that was between the 1800s maybe to up until the early 1900s or so afterward when the community truly started to grow and maybe more outsiders came in then that's when the bluish uh, family the 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 uh, urban legend of it started to die down because more people within that family truly started to marry others outside started to have children with others outside of the family and so the condition got less and less probably to normal levels like you and I when it comes to having this uh, particular uh, condition so that's why um, there's not any reason for it in fact um, reading an article there was someone a very elderly lady I think she died sometime in the 1980s she was the last known person to seems to have had this there may be abcnews.go.com which I'll include a link for it here states there may be one other person um, it was someone by the name of Hilda Stacy, who at the time of the article would have been 56 uh, she apparently also has that condition but she stays very I guess remote like it's it's hard to find her uh, ABC News was not able to in their case they tried to find her try to uh, have her answer calls but there was no one there so with regards to this condition um, it's pretty much outwardly just gone other than let's say something as far as uh, out of the blue birth having someone like let's say a blue child all of a sudden occur again then in that case it's just pretty much relegated to these blue skinned people of Kentucky so quite fascinating stuff when it comes to this urban legend absolutely true you had this Fagati family that were inbreeding within each other starting with the guy he was the main carrier of this genetic condition then um, he had children with someone I don't know if it was someone really close in his family or someone like a distant cousin but who knows this uh, this woman Elizabeth they had their children they had the condition as far as the blue color of their skin slowly uh, crept outward when it comes to the community and inbreeding but then with more people moving in and in their cases some other people moving out then that's when it started to go down one final note though about the blue skinned people it can happen actually not by genetics but by pure happenstance and it has to do with this guy right here this guy his name is Paul Carrison he's still alive apparently he lives there in Oregon what had happened was back I think he said like sometime in the um, 90s or so he saw an ad of some sort involving a medical alternative medicine type stuff um, it's one of those uh, things that you see on TV where it's not a traditional uh, let's say pill of some sort but rather it's an alternative method of, of getting things done when it comes to medicine well this one involved taking I think the way he described it was a glass of water but it was tainted with some kind of silver the way it's called it was collodial silver like little teeny tiny silver particles of sorts and the idea was if you took this medicine it would not only increase your health but it would quote unquote rejuvenate you and so this was of what this guy was looking for apparently he was having some kind of problems with himself I think he said that um, he found like uh, it was something I don't I didn't know if it was like arthritis or he had something involving his ingestion of bloodstream who knows what it was but he took it and when that happened um, it, it he said at least it cured him of this but what the next step is what did him in because he had on his face a condition called dermatitis which are those uh, red spots those red rashes that can appear in the face and he thought to himself maybe this will also help cure and so he took that water tainted with the silver put it on his face and when that occurred after a short while that's when his skin started to turn blue and then on top of that his entire body started to turn blue exactly as you see here otherwise he's in fine condition other uh, you know than the bluish skin but he here he is a um, victim essentially of 
what had occurred here. He would look exactly as the Fugatis would have looked back then. The photo that you saw at the very beginning of the video, that's just a black and white photo that was manipulated to showcase the bluish skin. Here in this case is a real life example of how it would look like to this day. The condition that this guy uh, falls under, this guy Paul Harrison, is called Algeria, which is um, a, me a medical term for silver poisoning. That's essentially what happened. He was poisoned with enough silver to cause the change of his color of his skin to what you see now. Uh, and it's permanent too, because even though he stopped taking that medicine, um, that was it. Um, he thought that it was actually having to do with the silver being directly applied to his face, whatever that water was that was tainted with silver, but some of the other medical experts said no damage was already done everything that he had taken all those times before internally with that water eventually it reached his skin and then it turned his skin that particular color and then on top of that the other interesting thing is the inside of his body his own internal organs are most likely blue too because of the silver poisoning that he has as well so quite fascinating stuff here so here's a real life example of this condition called Algeria which is again very very visually similar to what the condition was the Fugatti family had too so quite fascinating stuff so if anyone has any more information information about the blue skin people of Kentucky that would be great to hear uh, quite so interesting to, to read this information because again the idea that some a family like this had this bluish skin that looked like Smurfs they looked like the Avatar people um, they were there here in the US that's what makes it so interesting so alright everybody thanks again as always Take care.